Is this the new Steam VR dashboard theme? Nope. Could this be Viveport? No way. Oculus Home? Definitely not. This is the brand new Pimax VR experience, an exclusive VR front-end, environment and dashboard built in Unity and made exclusively for all Pimax VR headsets only. And if you wonder, yes, this is what I've been working on for the past six months. Welcome everyone, this is Sui Viber. I hope you remember me, I hope you remember this t-shirt as well. I am back, no I have not quit YouTube, I will bring you new benchmark videos, reviews and gameplays and other stuff. But yeah, for the past six months I've been quite busy. As you already know, I'm working for Pimax and I'm officially the European Marketing Director on Pimax. Well, ever since the Covid outbreak take part in Europe back in March this year, I haven't been able to fulfill my working tasks such as travel for example. So me and Kevin Henderson, the COO of Pimax, started to brainstorm and started to came up with ideas to create an exclusive VR-based Pimax dashboard, configurator and optimizer and game launcher at the same time. Well, honestly, I've been coding a lot in my life before, but never in Unity and never with C Sharp. This, so this was quite a challenge for me from start. But after grinding Unity for weeks and months, starting from basically nothing, now around six months later, this product is launched for the public, for you guys. Thankfully, a month ago, a good and very close friend of mine, Armin Dorosi, volunteered to join the development of the Pimax VR experience. Armin is a VR enthusiast, of course, and a very skillful programmer and Unity developer. Actually, he is a creator of the Board Games VR game available on Steam, which I personally recommend you to try out, as I think it's really better than any other board game or VR board game simulator out there. Now, ever since Armin joined me on this project, we have been made some incredible progress thanks to his knowledge and skills. And on this weekend, we are confident enough to bring you the first open beta release of the Pimax VR experience version 0.5 or 50, which you can now download bundled with the latest version of the Pytool software directly from the Pimax official OpenMR community forum. Just run the installer of Pytool and the Pimax VR experience will immediately start up inside of your Pimax headset. In the upcoming weeks, me and Armin will do some developer live streams here on YouTube regarding the Pimax VR experience. In these live streams, we will go through all the functionality, all the current available features, as well as future plans and new updates of the software. We will also discuss with all of you out there doing these live streams, and we will take notes on your suggestions and ideas, discuss changes and suggestions for improvement of this software. And that all to simply make the software even better and constantly updated with new cool features. I will let you know in advance when this first live stream is happening, so don't worry about that. But meanwhile, today, let me introduce you to the basic functionality and the current progress of the Pimax VR experience, or the Pimax VR Home, as you also may call it. First off, this is a VR dashboard that launches directly inside of your Pimax VR headset as soon as you turn it on before you even start off Steam VR Home or Viveport or any other platform. This software runs in Unity with Pimax's own SDK runtime and renderer, so it will not run simultaneously with other SDKs such as the Steam VR dashboard. And there is a good reason for that. Basically, any adjustment of the settings you make inside of your Pimax VR headset, such as the field of view, the resolution or the render quality, or the enabling or disabling smart smoothing, for instance, needs to be done before Steam VR or Viveport or any other platform or VR game launches. And it's been a real hassle to change the settings in between starting and quitting the game. Every time you wanted to change the field of view, for instance, you needed to quit Steam VR and the game you were running, take off your headset, go to your desktop monitor, open up PyTool, and then change the setting, apply the setting, then go back to put on your headset again, start off the Steam VR and then the game, and then you finally could use your new setting. Now using the Pimax VR experience, you never really need to leave VR when making all those changes of the settings while being in VR. 
you have all these settings you normally have in PyTool and you can manually or automatically through profiles adjust these settings and then launch any game again directly in VR or from VR. If you ever quit the game or Steam VR itself, you're always instantly brought back to the Pimax VR experience inside of VR again. The power of this is not only the convenience itself of always staying in VR, but also the fact that you can use profile-based settings for each individual VR game or experience you have installed, and these settings can automatically be applied when you start the game if you prefer to have everything automated. You can let Pimax VR Experience automatically create the profiles for you for each game or you can create, edit or delete your own custom profiles for each game or a general profile for all the games. Soon, the profiles with settings for each individual game will also be cloud-based, which means online. And that means your games will have automatically optimized profiles with settings based on your configuration, your Pimax headset model, your GPU model, and so on. You will also be able to share your own profiles with others and download custom profiles that other has made. The online cloud-based profile system is still in progress, so it's not yet implemented into the current Pimax VR experience, but we're not far off from actually releasing it as well. Apart from the Pimax headset settings, we have already now built in automatic and manual SteamVR optimization, which you can either control manually or get automatically applied upon launching each game. The SteamVR optimization sets very important values to the SteamVR configuration that makes the Pimax experience in like games like Half-Life, for example, much more sharp and crisp and just optimized. SteamVR is known to not really optimize the settings uh, for high resolution sets such as Pimax and now the Pimax VR experience solved this problem. You can of course restore your original settings at any time and everything is done with a few clicks from the Pimax VR experience itself inside of VR. Oh, by the way, the software itself on default is running in your headset and hidden on the desktop but you can also have it open in full screen or window mode on your desktop if you prefer so. But we'll talk about this later on in the developer streams together with Armin, I think. Further on, one of the main features of Pimax VR experience is the game importer and game launcher itself. Here's the thing, every single VR game you have installed on your system in SteamVR, Oculus Home, Viveport, as well as Revive games that you can run, well, Oculus game that you can run through SteamVR, they are all automatically imported into Pimax VR experience upon the first launch when it's with its own title, own thumbnail, and all the necessary arguments. Besides that, even the non-Steam games that you have added into SteamVR library gets imported to the Pimax VR experience as well. So upon every launch of the Pimax VR experience, the list of your new installed games is automatically updated so that you always have all your installed games automatically imported and up to date. Now, you can of course customize any imported game directly inside of the Pimax VR experience by changing the title, the thumbnail or other parameters which are available to be changed. Furthermore, you can at any time manually import custom VR games and applications which are not a part of the Steam VR or Oculus or any other platform, such as simple and small, well, let's say indie developer games from itch.io or where VR or other websites, or well, why not maybe something you have coded yourself in Unity, in Unreal Engine and other VR platforms that you want to play directly from the Pimax VR experience. And once everything is added, you can simply just sort and search for your games inside of each category and also add games to favorite lists and categories for faster access. But you may wonder why import all these games once again, because they're already in SteamVR and in Oculus Home and yeah. Well, the main purpose to import all these games is the ability to launch them directly from Pimax VR experience. Yes, you heard it right. You can launch any of these games with one click and it will start together with the necessary SDK platform such as the Steam VR if the game is starting with the Steam VR in the first place. So there's really no need to ever leave VR anymore and reaching for your desktop. And on top of that, as I said before, you'll get all your settings automatically applied to your headset right before the game actually launches. 
based on the associated profile with the settings and the SteamVR optimization that you have configured or you're just basically using the default ones available. Now I know I'm geeky, just like always, I won't get too geeky about this. I think that's way too much for this video. So I will get deeper into this topic later on, especially in the developer live streams together with Armin. Now let's move on to the next topic. How about UI interaction in the Pimax VR experience? The plan is to have more than six different ways of interaction implemented, all from VR controllers, gamepads to eye tracking. Currently, the beta version 0.50 supports three different interactions. The VR mouse controller interaction, mouse interaction directly inside of VR, and also full hand tracking interaction using the exclusive Pimax Ultra Leap hand tracking modules or any other leap motion module that you have home, even the oldest ones. The laser pointer interaction with VR controllers is the default one and supports all Steam VR Lighthouse compatible controllers, such as the Valve Knuckles and the HTC Vive controllers version 1.0 and 2.0. Point the laser, click the trigger, scroll the pages, and use it just like you do in Steam VR dashboard. The VR mouse mode lets you interact with everything in the UI with your mouse by seeing a 3D mouse cursor on screen in VR. You can customize the sensitivity, the mouse pointer size, and already now even choose between two different 3D models of the mouse cursor, hand and an arrow. The hand tracking mode lets you interact with the entire UI and all the menus and buttons directly with your hands, in two different ways actually, depending on what you prefer is the best way or depending on which UI scale you're using in the software. Now let me explain, there is a finger touch mode when you're touching and swiping and pushing all the buttons and there's also a finger pinch mode when you're projecting a pointer on the screen and you're pinching to click or drag or whatever. You may not know this, but you can change the UI scale and distance from your eyes in four different levels inside of VR experience. There is a large, medium, small and miniature mode. And the large, medium and small mode sets the UI, the, the entire menus, further away from you and also more large, it scales it up, right? While the miniature mode scales down the UI to a minimal size, it brings it around two feet from your eyes or on your headset, so you can actually touch everything, interact with everything by just touching it with your fingers and hands. And hand tracking accuracy is extremely good, especially when used with the new Ultra Leap modules made for Pimax that has 170 degrees of field of view with the hand tracking camera. So you can see your hands up to 170 degrees on horizontal side. But what about hand tracking if there are any proper hand models, right? I guess you have probably seen the low polygon models of hands when watching hand tracking demos of the leap motion in the past, right? Well, I have at least. I wasn't really happy with these models. It didn't look, it didn't felt realistic, I would say. So I decided to add not less than 50 different hand models or skins to the Pimax VR experience. Most of them are human hands, but also some of them are robot hands and various models are included just for fun. So now we have male hands, male hands with arms, bright skin, dark skin, metallic skin, shiny skin, glowing skin, and so on. We also have female hands, female hands with arms, ghost female hands, green, blue, dark, bright skin, and yes, we even have female hands with arms and painted nails. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> And all this is made to add some extra dimension to the Pimax VR experience and the VR presence itself. Believe me, people who have recently tried the Pimax VR experience with various human hand models told me it's really something unique that they haven't seen or felt in the past. It is actually a bit mind-blowing if you ask me, and almost surreal for some, maybe even a bit uncomfortable as it's suddenly just too realistic with hands in VR. Well, as far as I know, Pimax VR Experience is the only VR software that has such a wide selection of hands, especially human model hands, available with real-time hand tracking in VR. I think that itself makes Pimax VR Experience to stand out. 
Anyway, me and Armin, we are currently working to integrate the, the 7 Invensum eye tracking interaction and also the calibration right into the Pimax VR experience. And I think that would be very useful for everyone with a 7 Invensum eye tracking module with their Pimax. We are also working on gamepad UI interaction support, a full IPD setup guide, a desktop view with mouse and keyboard interaction when you're looking at the monitor and not in VR so you can still use Pimax viewing experience on your monitor. Also, we are considering to add a virtual desktop mode, just like in the application virtual desktop, as well as built-in video player and many other cool features. So without going too far in this video, guys, just jump into the Pimax official OpenMR forum, download the latest PyTool version, which includes the Pimax VR experience version 0.50 and try it out for yourself. And remember, this is still a beta version. It's still far from perfect. It may have bugs and you will probably find some bugs. Some... So have that in mind, okay? Anyway, let us know what you think about this software. Let us know what's missing, what's wrong, what we should improve and implement and so on. Me and Armin are working on this basically on full time. And with your help, we will do our best to make this software better for each day. Okay, one more thing, which is very, very, very important. I, please listen to this. You know I'm a Pimax employee. I work for Pimax, so I get paid for Pimax every month, just the normal salary. But Armin, unfortunately, is not working for Pimax, at least not yet. Um, and he's doing his, this as a volunteer, so he's not getting paid or anything. So I would like to give from all of us out there to you, Armin, a huge thanks for what you're doing. Really, thanks, man. Thank you for your dedication every, and everything you have done so far. It really, really makes a difference. And guys, please don't hesitate to support my friend Armin if you are able to. Armin really deserves some appreciation and support from all of us, I think. He has a Patreon account that you can join even with just one or two dollars. It can really make a huge difference. Believe me, I am, an, or at least I was, an active YouTuber and I know how much Patreon support can help out. And yes, I am already trying to support Armin the best way I can for myself. And I hope that one day very soon, hopefully very soon, he could become a part of the Pimax team as well. We'll see about that. I would also like to give a big thanks to the entire Pimax team who allowed to make this happen, who allowed me to spend like six months on working on this and still get paid. And specifically, I would like to thank the coders and creators of PyTool that customized the PyTool software for me so the Pimax VR experience even could communicate with the Pimax runtime to be able to make all the changes and settings. Without you guys, it would not be even possible. And lastly, a huge thanks to all you beta testers out there who has been helping us out the past month in the closed or private beta phase. You have helped us big time to solve issues, find bugs, and you gave us some great ideas to actually improve the software and add new features. And guys, let me know what you think about the Pimax VR experience down here in the comments down below. And don't forget to join the Pimax OpenMR official forums. And yes, sooner or later, this will become an open source project so we can all contribute and add stuff into it. Guys, so yes, thank you so much for watching. Yes, there will be RTX 3090 uh, comparisons and benchmarks because it's already ordered. Uh, so yeah, I don't know when it's coming, but when it's coming, there's gonna be videos here about it, guys. Take care, have fun, and see you next time. Oh, and by the way, it's a boy. Sweet Vibrate 2.0.